Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. You may have heard by now that an enterprising modder has discovered some interesting settings nestled within Watch Dogs on PC. What he's then done is taken those settings and created config files which have allowed for the original E3 2012 visuals to appear within the Watch Dogs game, demonstrating that not only are those effects that we initially saw with the first unveil still there, but they are also very much functional and can operate on PC. This, of course, follows up the controversy regarding the obvious visual downgrade that Watch Dogs received on all platforms prior to release, and of course the PC version got stung for that as well. Combine that with the annoying problems that many PC users have had in terms of performance, as well as the Uplay servers throwing a fit and dying for a few days, questionable mouse controls, and a number of other minor issues, you have a recipe for a not particularly brilliant PC port, even though it certainly looks like a AAA title. The problem is it doesn't look like the AAA title that we saw in the first place. And you have to wonder, well, hang on a minute. We remember what you showed us in the first place, and surely if my PC happens to be four to five times as powerful as a PlayStation 4, then... I should be able to at least get close to what you showed me in 2012, right? I mean, that seems reasonable, doesn't it? Well, it certainly is now. Those settings were there in the first place. They simply were not enabled. And this is not a case of modding the game to go beyond what it was initially capable of doing, at least. Not if you compare it to its first unveiling. This is not like IC Enhancer, for instance, for GTA 4. It's not some of the enhanced natural beauty modifications that are made for Skyrim. This stuff was already there, and the person that discovered it needed to change a few things around in order to enable it, and that really was about it. So let's not call it a mod. A mod implies that it's been added to the game, that it was something that was user-generated, that it wasn't initially intended to do that. No, no, no. It was initially intended to do that. But somewhere along the line, it was disabled. And the question now becomes, why? Well, a lot of you are probably jumping to a fairly reasonable conclusion. It just wouldn't run properly. After all, what we saw at E3 was a demo, a small vertical slice of what was going on. We've seen what's happened with vertical slices in the past, haven't we? Absolutely. Aliens, Colonial Marines, one of the most infamous of those. PC can't handle it. It was running on some souped-up rig. It was a tiny fraction of the city pushed to its absolute limit. Hey, maybe it was pre-rendered or something along those lines. It is not unheard of. Unfortunately, that is not true. So after doing a little bit of a casual performance analysis comparing the two, the game still runs like ass, but it runs like the same sort of ass. I've criticized the performance of Watch Dogs many times, and rightfully so, because it does not run very well, and it still does not run very well. It's worth noting that since Watch Dogs came out on PC, it has not received a performance patch in order to fix the problems and properly optimize the game. We were in fact promised one on May the 31st, and we have yet to see it. Recent reports indicate that it will be coming in the next few days, but as it stands, the game has both stability issues as well as performance problems when it comes to a wide variety of PC configurations, and the various benchmarks online would confirm that there is a very strange variation indeed in terms of the level of performance. What I did not notice a variation in, however, was the performance between the modified or indeed original version that uses these modified config files and the regular version. Looking at the frame rates, they both hovered around the same. There was maybe a couple of frames dipping here and there, depending on where you happen to be, particularly if the lighting effects were rather intense, but outside of that, the game runs about as well as it did in the first place. That is my experience, of course, and your mileage may vary. So, that's that out of the way. Something that would make sense, and you wouldn't be unreasonable for assuming, but as it turns out, that is not the case. Alright, so if that's out the way, well, what does that leave us? What could have possibly happened there? Is it a case that the PC port was not allotted enough time, and they simply were not able to fully realize those visuals and effects prior to release? 
it is absolutely possible. However, this would indicate a number of things. One, possible incompetence on the part of the development team. The fact that they couldn't get things finished in time and decided just to hide them which is not a good way of going about things. This is especially true considering that the game had a full six more months of development, considering the significant delay that was put on it in the first place. So that doesn't seem likely. Secondly, of course, the development team may very well have been rushed by the publisher. This is a multi-platform release. It came out on five separate platforms, next gen, previous gen, and of course PC. It is entirely feasible that Watch Dogs was not, in fact, prioritized on PC, regardless of the fact that they claimed that Watch Dogs was running on PC as the lead platform. This is according to the CEO himself of Ubisoft. Considering the widespread performance problems that PC users have experienced, as well as the significant port issues and control problems, it seems fairly unlikely that what the CEO claimed was actually true. Perhaps it was at the time, but maybe focus switched. So those are possibilities. It could simply be incompetence. Indeed, Hanlon's Razor states, never attribute to malice that which can adequately be explained by stupidity. And Ubisoft has made plenty of very questionable decisions in the past, and it has messed up ports for PC time and time and time again. Assassin's Creed 3 was a mess, Assassin's Creed 4 was a little better, but still not particularly fantastic when it came to performance. South Park The Stick of Truth was locked to 30 FPS, although in that case I think we can understand why. And then we also, of course, had things like Call of Juarez Gunslinger, which was lacking a field of view slider and was unpleasant for many of us to play until you actually modded it. And that's not even going further back in time to the point when Ubisoft DRM was so ludicrously draconian on PC that many PC gamers were boycotting the company entirely over always-on DRM and ridiculous anti-piracy methods that did nothing but punish the legitimate gamer in the first place. So Ubisoft does not have a brilliant track record when it comes to PC. We saw that perhaps they would be trying to turn things around. The last couple of years have not been awful. Far Cry 3, of course, is a great showpiece on PC even now. Considering it came out in 2012, it looks great. Games like Mighty Quest for Epic Loot, as well as Shoot Mania Storm and Ghost Recon Online were all very good examples of solid PC titles. Hell, they even released a new Might and Magic game, which was extremely surprising, and of course it was a PC exclusive. So things did look like they were turning around, but with this recent release, I have to question whether or not Ubisoft has acted in good faith here. Now we can move on to the conspiracy theories, of which there are many. Did Ubisoft deliberately gimp the PC version, and if so, why would they do something like that? So, the theory that I feel is the least likely, which is doing the rounds at the moment, is that both Microsoft and Sony paid Ubisoft off to downgrade the PC version to provide parity with the console version in order to ensure that the next-gen machines looked better by comparison. This seems highly unlikely. A collusion between Sony and Microsoft to that scale doesn't seem like the kind of thing that would actually happen. At this point, I think it's fair to say that one is more concerned about the other than they are about PC. While PC is certainly growing and has a significant market share, the battle, at least right now in the next gen, is between Sony and Microsoft. It is not between Sony, Microsoft, and, well, nobody owns PC, but we might as well toss Valve in there for good measure anyway. A slightly more sensible version of that conspiracy theory would be the idea that Sony were, in fact, the ones that pushed for parity with the PC version. Why would they do that, and why would I be calling on Sony there as opposed to Microsoft? Well, I would do that because Sony actually had a content exclusivity deal with Ubisoft in order to provide additional content for the PlayStation platform only. In Europe, there was also a bundle deal with the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 for the console plus the game. So, there would appear to be a connection there, hardly a hidden one either. As an amusing piece of trivia, which is most likely not relevant, but quite funny nonetheless, the Watch Dogs movie, which is supposedly in development, is in production with Regency and Sony Pictures! Uh-huh, yes. Well, again, that's just a coincidence, I'm sure. 
Does Ubisoft hate PC? Uh, one of the other accusations kind of been thrown in their general direction. While they have certainly failed to demonstrate a love for it, there's no real doubt about that. Their actions in the past few years speak for themselves. But does it really make any sense to punish PC owners for no particular reason? Do they genuinely believe that piracy is a huge problem with their products? A few years ago they certainly did, but they've eased off on the DRM requirements at this time. So is that still the case? Do they believe that it is best to encourage people to buy on console? In theory, it doesn't make a lot of sense for them to do that. From a business standpoint, you do actually make more money, especially on the Uplay platform, by selling a PC version than you do by selling a console version. Because, as some of you might be aware, console games need to pay a license fee, which is usually around 20%. If you wonder why a lot of PC games are around $10 cheaper, well, there's your answer, because you're not paying a license fee. But let's be honest with ourselves, while the previous gen certainly has piracy, the next gen currently does not, and the PC has more piracy than the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. I don't think there's really any doubt about that one. So is it reasonable to discourage people from buying your game on PC because you'd prefer they buy it on console? No, because ultimately you shoot yourself in the foot in the long term. This incident is one of the most glaringly obvious set of inconsistencies, half-truths, and potentially downright lies that I've seen from a major publisher in a very long time, claiming the PC is the lead platform, showing footage two years ago that is not the case today and yet can be re-enabled with a few fairly simple changes to the config files and a little digging in the code. This is a fairly big deal that has a lot of traction and has made the news. The visual downgrade already got a lot of code and this is going to end up getting a bunch as well, that's not good for you in the long run. If you wish to discourage piracy and you wish to encourage customers, the best way to do that is to be honest with them and provide them with a quality product, which I'm sure many of us that purchase the game on PC will argue did not happen. Who exactly is Ubisoft trying to appease? Because I'm coming to the conclusion that there's only two possibilities here. Either the company is grossly incompetent and somehow couldn't get these things working within the PC version when a tweaker from the Guru 3D forums was able to sort it out in a relatively short period of time powered by nothing but Mountain Dew and PayPal donations. Or the decision to create false parity between the PC version and the next-gen console version was a deliberate move, in which case you're pretty much just admitting to the world that you deliberately gimped the PC version because the consoles weren't up to snuff. You're not going to find many PC gamers that are going to be too pleased with you for that one. Was it to shelter those who had invested in the next-gen console early from the truth? that even though it's a significant step up from their previous generation of machines, it still doesn't hold a candle to a high-end PC? Because most of them know that. They're actually not stupid. There are, in fact, very few real people that engage in the console war. What you see online is a gigantic echo chamber filled with 12-year-olds. I would certainly love to see a statement from Ubisoft as to what the hell happened. I really would. It's more likely, I think, that Ubisoft will simply stay silent and try to allow this to blow over. But I don't know just how fast that's going to be. They may, in fact, come out and praise the tweaker and say, hey, yeah, that's amazing that you were able to do that. Now, fan base is really passionate and our community is awesome. And I do hope that gamers see right through that and say, you what, mate? <laughs> you bloody what? There is still some work to be done on this so-called modification. There's still plenty of things that could be enabled and fixed and so on and so forth. Things are not perfect yet. There's a couple of flickers in the headlights, although that's barely a problem. And the recent camera changes that he put into the game don't quite work the way they're supposed to. That said, you can just set it to normal and everything is just fine there. One could also argue the depth of field is a little bit too intense, even though it was toned down in version 0.7. But the fact of the matter seems to be that this downgrade on PC was absolutely unnecessary. And the two remaining options seem to be malice or stupidity. Which was it, Ubisoft? Which was it? Please do enlighten us. I would like to hear the reasoning. I realize that you are invested in the success of the next-gen consoles, no doubt about that. But the way to ensure their success is most assuredly not deception. That 
is acting in bad faith, and that is bad business practice. If you wish to download the mod, it is currently a work in progress, and it is in the description below this video. I should also point out that this is the vanilla version of the mod. I'm not using any kind of sweet FX post-processing, which is why it doesn't quite look as good as some of the beauty shots that have been taken. You might be saying, oh well, is the mod working? Yes, it is. But just bear in mind that they were also taken with sweet FX, which is a third-party tool, and I elected not to use it for this demonstration. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time.